When I was four years old, my parents and I emigrated to Boyle Heights from Brussels, Belgium, where I was born. They were Holocaust survivors from Poland. <laughs> my mom instantly got me into showbiz and Maglin Studios in Venice, on Venice Boulevard, where I studied acting, piano, and dance, and singing, and I did lots of USO shows, among them on the go with Abbott and Costello and Donald O'Connor, where I tapped and rumbled. When I was nine, my singing and piano teacher, Bill Lockwood, told my mother that he was going to put me on the rocket to start on Bob and Betty Aka Oldsmobile Talent Scout show. <laughs> well, my mother told me at 3 a.m. that I was going to sing at 5 a.m., and I became really nervous. So she made me a cup of hot tea with lots of lemon and honey, and then we piled into a cab and drove over to the studio on Western Avenue. I got on stage, and there was a camera trained on me like the crosshairs of a sniper's rifle. And I started to sing my little French song, Mademoiselle de Paris, only I gagged throughout the whole song. Someone won a trophy, but it wasn't me. When I was 12, I had to sing on Rocket to Stardom again, but this time I was ready. She's so chic and adorable, no one thinks it's deplorable when men all turn around just to see Mademoiselle de Paris. You bet girls get a kick from her, learn each cute little trick from her in their hearts. They would all like to be Mademoiselle de Paris. Ooh la la, ah oui oui. She's the spirit of spring in Paris. Ooh la la, ah oui oui. Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle de Paris. Paris, I won the trophy. <laughs> when I was nine, um, my mom and I took the bus from Boyle Heights to Hollywood after a horrible audition and we stopped in at a coffee dance to drink some coffee and rest our feet. And it was on um, Highland and Hollywood Boulevard, and it was part of a chain of coffee dance all over the city in the early, well, mid-50s, something like that. Oh, wait, 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 late 50s. Anyway, so we sat down, and um, then I spotted Sal Minio sitting at a table, like, really close to us. And my mom saw him too, and then she ran over to his table and then tried to bring him back over to me. I hid under our table, and then she dragged him over and she said, Sal, this is Simon, she wants to be a movie star. Simon, Simon, where are you? Get out from under the table. Well, I sat down, and then my mother sat down next to me, and then Sal Minio sat across from us. And my mother said, Simon, give Sal your autograph book to sign. So I nervously gave him my little red autograph book. And he signed it. He signed it to Simone, love Sal Minio. And he gave me a kiss and he said, oh, Simone, honey, you can be an actress too if you want to be. And he was so gorgeous, so beautiful. He was like an angel to me. 1967. I was living in a hippie commune and had a boyfriend by the name of Leo who was a drug dealer and he, didn't, he couldn't have an erection. But anyway, he invited me to, um, on, to one of his deliveries. So we drove in his car to West Hollywood and parked in the parking garage and then took the elevator up to the second floor. We knocked on the door and Salminio answered. He didn't look so good. He hadn't aged well, and he looked very troubled. 
And his apartment was filled with all these gorgeous young actors, these gorgeous young guys. And one of them was Jay North from Dennis the Menace fame. And he said, hey man, got any rads? I kind of felt sick to my stomach and I said to Leo, please, let's get out of here. 1972, um, I was living on Ocean View Avenue and my girlfriend Bibby was living down the street from me and she was about to give birth to her son Channing. Beck was two or three years old then. I didn't know that she was about to pop out the baby and I had trouble sleeping. And then I suddenly woke up where I thought I had woken up and I could feel someone stabbing me like all over my body. Such horrible, deep, deep penetrating stabs, but no pain. And then I fell back asleep. And then I woke up the next morning and turned on the TV. And then the news announcer announced that Salminio had been brutally stabbed to death in his parking garage and he had been stabbed so horribly all over his body. And it was like I had this spiritual connection with him that I'll never forget. And every time I talk about it, it gives me chills. I love you so many or wherever you are. You're like an angel to me. There's a movie that's being made about him and I just found out about it, and so I'm dedicating this little piece to him and to Jill Hayworth, who recently passed away. She um, starred with him in Exodus, Otto Preminger's movie. That was her first starring role. Thank you. Yeah.